when I was in France, there was a psychoanalyst who was a member of the group there. And he kept raising the question, how can you trust yourself to observe yourself? He was very committed to the idea that there's a lot going on in the subconscious that you just don't want to admit to yourself, and you need somebody else to dig it out, or at least help you dig it out, point it out to you. And as I responded in the very beginning, you can't trust yourself. That's why you have to have a teacher. This is why the Buddha set up what was essentially an apprenticeship for passing along the Dharma. You live together, and through living together you got to know the teacher, and the teacher got to know you. And it was ideal in a situation for the teacher to point out where you were being sloppy, where you were being careless. where you were broadcasting your defilements to everybody else in a way that you didn't see, but everybody else could see, or at least the teacher could see. And the whole point of this training was that you ultimately would be able to see for yourself, and you could become a more reliable observer. In other words, his picture of the inner critic was of someone who was always willing to give you a free pass. or at least would give you a free pass on some really important things where you didn't deserve it. This is the opposite of what you see here in the States, where everybody in the psychotherapeutic business seems to tell you that oh, your inner critic is harsh, your inner critic is overly, overly scrupulous. Then you have to learn how to turn off the inner critic. Whether this is cultural or what, I don't know, but it is true that we tend not to see what our subconscious motives are and what our unskillful habits are. An important part of the practice is learning how to admit them, first when they're pointed out to you, and then secondly when you can start seeing them yourself. One of the reasons we meditate to get the mind still is to start seeing our own unskillful habits and to put the mind in a mood where it's willing to admit them. This is why concentration is an important part of the path, but it's not the whole path. Sometimes you hear the mistaken notion that you attain a certain level of concentration and it automatically attains a certain level of awakening. Well, it doesn't. People can go through all the, the jhanas and all the formless states and still not see anything. They see enough in the mind to get the mind into that state, but that's about it. That's so one of the major delusions is that concentration in and of itself guarantees awakening. Now it's part of the path, and it's one of the tools you use, but you have to realize we're here to see our own faults to see where we're causing suffering in ways that we haven't admitted to ourselves, in ways that are pretty obvious, if you're willing to take the time and be open to the idea, yeah, there are faults here, there are problems here. This is why the, the Buddhist prime requisites for someone who was going to, he was going to teach would be one, that the person was observant, and two, the person was honest, willing to admit his or her faults. Those are the basic prerequisites for the training. So we're here to get the mind quiet, and for a lot of us that right there is a huge accomplishment, a huge challenge. And we don't like to hear that, okay, once you've met that challenge, there's going to be more. But again, we're here, why? Not to please somebody else, not to show someone else that we can attain a certain level. We're here because we're suffering. And at least part of us realizes that the, the suffering that really weighs down in the mind is the suffering we're causing ourselves. This is why the ideal part of being a 
the practitioner, is that you learn how to be a self-starter. In the beginning, it's through learning about the Dharma that alerts you to the fact that okay, the suffering you're coming, that's weighing you down comes from within. And it's co coming from things within yourself that you don't see. And it's part of the mind that responds to that and says, yeah, I've had enough of that. It makes no sense at all. I, I do things, I think I do things for the sake of happiness, and yet I end up suffering. What's the reason? Why do I undercut the purpose of my efforts? Well, it's our craving and it's our attachment and it's our ignorance. Those are the things we've got to learn how to see through. And things we've got to learn how to abandon. And the problem is that we have many conflicting desires for happiness, many conflicting ideas about how happiness can be found. And so the obscure what what's actually going on. Part of you really wants a particular path of practice to lead happiness, and so you're willing to blind yourself to the unfortunate consequences. That's how things get driven underground. This is where your inner critic learns how to lie to you, gives you a free pass. There's another part that wants to discourage what you're doing in the practice. Maybe some people in your life who've been really especially harsh, and you've picked up their attitudes, you've picked up their ways of looking at you, and you take them on. And that is something you've got to learn how to see through as well. One of the themes that ran through the entire visit over there was the issue of the committee in the mind. And one of the women toward the end commented that she began to see that there were basically three roles that members of the committee took on. One would be the, the performer, and the other would be the sort of the stage setter. You sort of create the situation in which the performer was going to perform. And then the third was the critic. And so a lot of our committee members will fall into these three these three roles. I and mean, this is what becoming is all about, the performer and the stage setter. That's what becoming is in the mind. Your idea of who you are and the world in which you function, all of which come around your a desire for a particular kind of happiness. And then there's a part of you is judging whether this is working or not. And so a lot of the meditation is learning how to train that third member. The evaluator, the judge, the critic. So it's not too lenient and so it's not too harsh. So it really is helpful for bringing about the end of suffering, bringing about the happiness you want. So training these members is a purely internal issue. You need help to begin with, as the Buddha once said. You know, the, the whole of the path, the whole of the practice is having admirable friends, i.e. the people who will help point out where your inner committee members are, are lacking in one way or another, and to set the right standards for how that inner critic is going to judge things. On the one hand, expanding your idea about what true happiness can be, raising it up, and on the other hand, being skillful in learning how to move you in that direction. So we do hold high standards here. As the Buddha once said, the, the secret to his awakening was two things. One was not resting content with skillful qualities. If he hadn't truly reached an end of suffering, he wasn't going to let himself rest. And he also then exerted relentless effort. Just wouldn't give up, wouldn't give up. The part he doesn't mention there is the part where you learn have to learn how to pace yourself. And this is largely a matter of trial and error. How far you can push yourself when you have to rest, and when you can push yourself again when you have to rest again. And this is another one of the reasons why we practice concentration, is to give the mind a place where it can rest. So it's not just stressing and straining all the time.
and that its way of finding rest in the midst of the path is not just to go off and indulge in your old bad habits. It gives you a better place to rest, a better place to gather your energies. Then to give a good foundation for that inner critic. So it does become a wise critic, a wise observer, someone who gives helpful criticism, constructive criticism, someone who's actually on the team, that subset of the committee that really does want to put an end to suffering and is willing to do whatever is needed. And it really does see that the Buddha's standards for happiness are the ones that you really want to take on, that you're not going to let yourself Rest content with anything less. This is what having the self as a governing principle is all about. You've come this far in the path, it would be a shame to backslide, to go back for the pleasures that you had abandoned, or worse, and to try to content yourself with a lower level of happiness. So it's a complex matter, this training of the inner critic. The one who doesn't want to cut things short and say, well, I've got concentration, that's good enough for me, I'm willing to stop here. I've hit the fourth jhana, that's plenty. And the other one who's browbeating you for not reaching there and, and browbeat you so much that you give up hope, that's the one you want to get rid of. Both the indulgent critic and the destructive critic. You want to find a constructive critic, train the constructive critic inside. And it's there. There are parts of your life where you have taken on the role of constructive criticism of your own behavior, and you've really benefited. So you've got to figure out, okay, where did you put that constructive critic? And you get that one on board in the path, in the practice. at all the roles in the path. The various roles that you take on in the mind start coming together, working together. You have the sense of well-being that comes from the concentration, and you have the insight that comes from your developed abilities to be observant and truthful with yourself. and the willingness to put in whatever effort is needed in order to bring all these factors of the path together. It's a tall order, but it's not superhuman. There's nothing in the Buddhist teachings that lie beyond the capacities of human beings. It's simply a matter of whether you're deciding that you've had enough of causing yourself suffering. And that you generally do want to find a way out. 